What's up, everybody? This is Donnie, uh, Kevin's editor and camera guy. We're going to be looking at a topic today. Kevin's going to be looking at a topic. He's going to be talking about it, telling you his opinions on it. It's venomous free handling on YouTube. Now, it's been happening forever. It's, it's nothing new, but it seems to be popping up right now. Venomous free handling. Uh, Tyler Nolan just made a video about it. Is free handling venomous snakes ruining the hobby? Um, a lot of people would say, yes, it is. Or a lot of people would say, I hope you get bit in the face. It's troubling. Uh, we got Ace Venturi here who free handles cobras. And <sighs> he's this guy is a whole video on himself. Kevin hasn't even seen this guy yet. I think it's going to really make him uncomfortable. But we won't know till we show him. Enjoy uh, this uh, video here of Kevin explaining to you why he doesn't free handle venomous, especially on video. Because the results aren't always that great. And now things start to go south. It will just keep you like uh, this is gonna paying keep attention. You distracted. Hmm. So I just watched Tyler, uh, Tyler Nolan's uh, videos, and uh, I I watched where he's with Tom Crutchfield, and Tom is just a wealth of information. He's very uh, seasoned. So we are here at my buddy Tom's house. Hey, Tom. Hi, Tom. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so we are here also with the infamous Naga, okay? Naga is the cobra that, like you guys know, bit me, what, three years ago yeah, now? about three years ago. 2016. I think it was. Right. Tom has a lot of experience, uh, and Tyler's kind of going over the whole bite, like analogy, what happened with the, uh, the female king cobra. And um, right off the bat, Tyler loves reptiles, loves his snakes. I was looking at his uh, videos where he's looking at his personal collection, talking about them. And uh, I, I, people like him, I, I like because they're just like me. We just like these animals. We love these animals and they're important to us. And he's handling the animals. If I, you know, I didn't, I'm not making this video because I want to sit here and, and critique. We can always critique every single thing. I, me walking across the parking lot, you could critique that I almost fell over on a pebble or something like that. There's always somebody to criticize it. So I could easily look at his video and notice things, but I also know that Tyler would also look at his own video and notice things. And he was actually doing a commentary of that. So I'm not really doing anything about that. I just keep coming back to the, the, Donnie presented this to me, talking about what was like, you know, people were talking about is free handling ruining uh, the community of venomous keepers. And, um, well, if you can argue back, I would be very interested what your argument, why free handling is essentially a good thing and doing a lot of it. And, you know, we're posing with these beautiful pictures and all this different stuff with the animal. What are the benefits other than showing you that these animals can be very tolerant and that we can work with them. But ultimately, what would be, how would I argue this to somebody that's creating laws over me? That's my point. How could I argue free handling is actually a good thing? And what would I do to support that idea if I was trying to argue why I should be allowed to keep rattlesnakes and cobras and stuff like that? Uh, the only way I could argue why I should be allowed to keep venomous snakes is because I keep them responsibly, keep them in proper caging. I prevent any kind of dangers. I adhere to uh, certain uh, handling protocols and I do, those things and I don't get bit. Therefore, if they'll give me a permit year after year when I renew my permit, he's not getting bit, he's not getting bit, they're able to validate or I'm able to validate uh, the luxury, which is, uh, it's not my right. It is, it's been told to me by US Fish and Wildlife that these are privileges and that's the way they're looking at it, folks. This is privileges. It's also privileges for us to drive. Tom was uh, talking about tactile points so we had an animal that's going into a shed and talking regarding the female king that was in shed and Tyler was free handling and they were posing for some pictures and she eventually like lost her mind and came after him and nailed him on the hand she actually hung on which probably is probably not very normal so she really got a good chew on there and venomated him greatly 
Uh, he was lucky enough to get to the hospital, but he notes all this stuff. So I'm not saying anything that isn't what he was saying in the video. But when he starts talking about, uh, okay, free handling, and he grew up with this, and then Ryan Gitman, who's my buddy, and Ryan would take black and white spitters and put them on their neck, sure. A lot of times black and white spiders can be very, very uh, tractable animals. And we can do all these different stuff. He has a snake room with some snakes in it. If he lost his right to be able to keep all his venomous, he could switch over to keeping corn snakes. If I lost my right to keep venomous or to keep snakes in general, it's a huge traumatic experience for myself, my employees, the welfare of all my animals, where all these animals are gonna go. So I have to kind of pull it back in. I don't wanna deal with all the fallout that would happen and it would look, make the community look bad. So Tyler, I'm kind of just talking about that. You love your snakes. You're able to read your snakes. I'm not denying any of that. Uh, I can easily do that and then some. Mistakes happen, just like you said. And when it does happen, I don't know, you need to get bit another time or another time. At some point, you're right off the bat, other venomous keepers in Florida, I think maybe they're probably a little reacting too that if they're not free handling and you are free handling and then something bad happens to you and then uh, FWC goes, well, we're gonna tighten up these restrictions and you can't endanger people and blah, 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 blah. You know, it, it starts out where, you know, we have to tape an alligator's mouth shut. Now nobody's allowed to physically touch an alligator, but they can touch my monitor lizard. These laws don't make a lot of sense, but every day there's more laws. I'm not asking to make more laws. So when we do free handle and we do do a little bit of showboating in case we do get bit, I don't think we've done anything to support uh, more lax laws or to support the idea that we don't even need the laws. All these things will do is support the idea that maybe we do need more laws. So I know it's a fine line. I'm worried for you. Don't get bit. Uh, Chandler, you're, you're doing all this great stuff with the uh, King Cobras. I am thrilled that Chandler went out and was able to take King Cobras. He bought them and he released them. I love it. I, I, I love it so much. It's, uh, you know, you're doing stuff with king cobras and anything you guys do for reptiles and the welfare of these animals and enjoyment, I'm totally identifying with you. And I'm aware of it, but my own stupidity, I'm pretty stupid, but my own stupidity in doing something that is like a fail would be so kind of epic considering all the positive stuff that I'm doing. A little bit of animal negativity, if it's a lion, it's a tiger, if it's what a monkey doing something like that can make the entire community look bad and they never show like the complete thing and suddenly attacked mauling Nash as she tried to get out of her car. The chimps owner Sandra Harold fought off her pet by stabbing it with a kitchen knife and even social media. You get people that will use social media as a way to uh, fulfill their argument, even if they're lying, even if they're doing anything. It doesn't matter. It doesn't even matter what reality is. They're just going to give you this one version. So if we do that with venomous handling of these animals and oh look at this guy he just took it out and it bit him you know you haven't shown that the guy took it out a hundred times and did all this and eventually that fail occurred if I start doing this crazy stuff and hey look Kevin's awesome you can handle free handle stuff like that and I'm doing all this kind of stuff probably to some degree I'm maybe I make it look easy so I'm kind of encouraging other people to do something like that some way we're always going to be like you know your little kid you want to jump your bike off a of piece of plywood or whatever and you know you see one person do it and all the other kids are doing it until one of them crushes themselves on a boulder whatever it is it's going to happen so I just felt this is the reason why we aren't very good at being sensational it's probably because we're really boring but uh no it's I mean Donnie's always like ah oh, you gotta do you know whatever and I always argue with him yeah we do <laughs> I, we do I'm always arguing he's like you're boring your ball pythons are boring all this different stuff is boring and essentially it is, I have amazing animals and I have so many cool animals and gnarly animals and all that kind of stuff. But if I use them over and over again as like some kind of maybe clickbait or whatever, and you know, it, you kind of feel like you want to use some clickbait because it's going to get us a lot more views. But so far we've been kind of avoiding it. And, but uh, venomous reptiles are the great way to sensationalize things, get attention to ourselves and do all these things. And uh, we will have to show some really cool uh, venomous weird snakes that we do have that we don't really, we're not talking about, but that will be in the future. So I'm going to take out a Gaboon Viper now. What? Yeah. We're doing a Gaboon Viper? We're going to do a Aren't... Gaboon Viper. So this is a really great animal in respect that 
they uh, tell you a lot what's going on and uh, these guys can lull you into a, a sense of uh, basically uh, irresponsible behavior because you're talking about an animal that is very often not inclined to bite. If you make a mistake with something like this, what could happen? She's a doll. I'm watching the way she's acting. Wonderful. She's, she's just, she's talking to me. I literally can put my hand underneath her face and free handle her and be really dramatic. And uh, I love her. I always want to have this snake. I want to have the ability to have this snake. I don't want to make the people that are giving me permits in my state to look bad and to regret ever doing this. So I have to, as hard as it is sometimes, I have to think about the bigger picture. And the bigger picture is the reason why I don't try to showboat but once again, I'm not directly attacking the people that are effectively handling. But I do see these guys, look at me, I'm gonna go and uh, I've got a rattlesnake or a gaboo viper. He lives with over 60 venomous snakes. And I'm like, oh my goodness, I'm watching these people and they suck. They're, they don't have a skill set. The skill set isn't even there. They're not reading the animal, they don't even really know anything. It's like, yeah, I got these stupid snakes in my house and rah, rah. Those guys are painful. Those guys are gonna hurt us and they're gonna discredit us and they're basically, they are the literal bad when I lift up that snake keeping carpet. So this is an animal that tells me what's going on. Uh, so if I touch her, she's gonna just, so every time she breathes like that, she is just telling me that hey, it's a little something a little spooky. So if I sit and wave my hands around and do anything that's gonna put her on alert, she's gonna give me a little tss. So what she's doing is basically, uh, nature has said, you're cryptic, so you need to be loud and you need to be maybe menacing. Like a puff adder will sit there and shake its head and do all these things. A gaboon viper, very cryptic, it's gonna blend in with the dead leaves on the forest floor where it's sitting there to ambush hunt. And so she is naturally gonna be very, uh, sensitive to any kind of movements, anything that would scare her. And you gotta remember this. This is an animal that there is nothing that's ever designed it to ever interact with us. There is nothing. This is all contrary to what instinct is actually setting this animal up for. So you need to remember that. So the animal's never gonna be as intelligent as we are. And uh, we're still relying on the brain and how the brain is actually per perceiving us and how we're handling the animal. And uh, at some point, we're gonna misread something. We're gonna cause an animal to kind of lose its mind, become defensive, and it can be very sudden, and it can be very erratic. And in that instance, that's where your bite can happen, and then the result could be horrific. I don't wanna go through that. I wanna keep my fingers, I shred on guitar. No, I'm, uh, but I just, I want to have my fingers, I want to be able to keep these animals, and the only good I could see was just my personal experience getting to free handle them. So even if I were doing my free handling and I've done a lot, um, I don't generally record it on film. We did do a cop, we're gonna show a copperhead video. And I showed Donnie, because Donnie's never really seen me free handle things and I'm like, actually, I have a history of doing that. And I, I kind of argue why I stopped doing it. So in the video, I'm showing myself free handling a copperhead that I found. This is Kevin. Kevin Smith. Taking liberties. He doesn't want to see any worse things today. He wants to go sit in the ER. buttons too much you gave me and I'm messing around with it and I'm just very comfortable with it and I'm looking at it and I'm once again I'm reading my behavior with that animal and at that point I could tell that animal was gonna get ready to bite me and it took a shot at me and almost got me and moved my hand out of the way didn't phase me at all I just smiled and like did you get that 
on camera. Uh, that didn't scare me. It's a wonderful animal. I have a very good respect for it. If you start putting all sorts of different Gaboon Vipers in front of me that I wasn't familiar with, I would potentially handle them a little bit more conservative. So let's just say that I have to be a conservative snake handler because I'm in a position where I have thousands and thousands of animals. I need, don't need to go to the hospital. I don't need, need to make us look bad. I don't need to uh, make my other uh, main venomous handler, which is Timmy, look bad. If I went and were to get bit and acted stupidly, vice versa, if Timmy was doing something stupid, that uh, that would upset me because he's basically endangering the, the welfare of everything to you know how we're perceived to other handlers and stuff. So I know this animal really well, and uh, I know what I can kind of do. Uh, but I'm just gonna this. What you do is you want to respect it. You want to basically make sure that you're not in a place where you would upset her. So what I'm doing right now is I'm touching the lower portion of her body. Some snakes are really sensitive. Some snakes don't want to have their tails touched. So uh, watching some of these other videos and people are you know going in there doing the, you know a lot of king cobras. King cobras are easily going to draw a lot of attention because that's like the largest, longest venomous snake in the world. Uh, the bites can be horrific, a life-threatening bite. Don't you do not get bit by this. Like the venom is so toxic, it could kill many, many people. The one thing you have to understand with king cobras is once they pretty much realize that you're not like going to get them, uh, their defensiveness may be a lot of show, but not as nearly as willing to bite you. And so you can get away with more. A snake like this, if I took one of these snakes and this snake was all, wasn't doing these long tongue flicks. See, I'm watching snake. I'm doing all my snake behavior. This, this is a very comfortable snake. That right there, everything's good. So I can get away with a lot but I still won't do it. As much as I want to, the benefits to my position in the industry, to my company, to everything, I can't afford to make a mistake. So therefore, I need to control myself and I need to be smart. Just like when we're driving a car, we can probably do a lot of stupid things when we're driving cars and uh, people are texting or whatever and then they crash the car. They don't think it's gonna happen and it does happen. So it's there's things outside of my control. And uh, I, I think it's just very important for me to kind of go through this. Just because I'm not free handling these animals is nothing to do with my level of expertise and my capacity to free handle these guys. To, to be honest with you, Kevin, the reason I kept pushing you to do it is because I wanted people to know that we had venomous here. Oh, we have venomous. Because I think people didn't realize you had it because you never used to take it out. And then I got Kevin realizing how much of, you know, everything trends when you put venomous in the title. I have to do a video with the red spitters, which means I'm going to have to probably annoy my red spitters a little bit. Because... <gasps> because all we have is footage of the red spitters doing this on the ground without them doing any hooding or anything really worth putting in a video. They're, they're just big babies and they're, they're no longer spit. This, this snake isn't very dramatic. She's giving me these little puffs and she's just being so wonderful. Wonderful, wonderful snake. She's she's uh, she's kind and she's sweet and no striking, no nothing, no throwing herself around. It's because uh, I'm handling this animal within the parameters. And so a lot of people we we'll use Tyler. So Tyler got bit by a king cobra when he was doing something uh, when handling it. So that right there to me is yeah, it's just a great example. Mistakes do happen. So you know he can free handle these these animals and then one day you you get that bite. I, I really want to save myself from missing the tip of my finger because then I'm not going to be able to do my sweeping arpeggios and all that stuff and shred on guitar if I don't have fingers. So I really want to be careful. As long as I obey basic uh, rules of using my equipment, a little bit boring, but uh, I think I love, I still love to look at the animal. It's just, I mean, this animal is so fantastic. And I just understand how precarious things can be. How laws, you know, don't, let's not forget guys, US Ark, I work with US Ark. I'm one of their main reptile snake experts and reptile experts. And that all that would do is discredit me and what I'm arguing. Because if I'm gonna get up there in front of the Senate or if I'm gonna go and argue against laws, I kind of have to be a little bit on point, I have to be a better example of our industry than uh, a nitwit. And uh, 
my tendency would probably be want to do things that would get me to look like a nitwit, so I'm going to try to just be a little bit responsible because I've uh, done a lot uh, for our community and I value that, so I want to value all my work. So I have to be responsible and I have to try to be positive. Let me ask you a question before I forget it. Steve Irwin, do you think he was irresponsible and do you think Love he'd be bad? Steve wait, Irwin. wait, do you think he'd be bad for the reptile community these days though? I don't care what anybody says. I love Steve Irwin. Steve Irwin was wonderful. I knew Steve Irwin. Yep. I work with Steve Irwin. Uh, so there, uh, the, the one thing where he's holding the kid above the crocodile. So what we did was we did a public outcry because the public has now assessed that was uh, dangerous. To Steve, it wasn't dangerous. TV's crocodile hunter Steve Irwin takes his one-month-old son to his debut crocodile feeding in Brisbane, Australia in front of a crowd of onlookers. Not since Michael Jackson dangled his baby over a balcony has a celebrity's parenting decisions been so questioned. So if I'm going to go free handle this animal and start doing this, to me in my mind, I'm like, this isn't dangerous because I know the animal, I know the situation, and I'm very capable and I'm very confident of my skills. And generally that works. The smallest minuscule time mistakes happen. Steve was killed by a ray, a stingray. He would have never predicted that. So that in itself is proof in this pudding that he could do thousands and thousands of interactions with dangerous animals and nothing ever happened. Well, we lost Steve because he didn't assess a potential danger. And it is so sad. Uh, I was going to be doing further work with Steve and there was like bigger, better things to come and I lost all that opportunity. But most importantly, we lost, oh this guy, she just, you just missed it. She just fanged out and she was yawning and, and adjusting her fangs. That would have been a good thumbnail. So cute. We lost Steve Irwin, which was the greatest one single person and force for the betterment and the welfare of reptiles and how they're perceived throughout the world. And it's very, very sad. And um, she, look how wonderful she is, Donnie, come in. Mm -hmm. I could literally tickle her underneath her chin. Do it. Sorry, I'm just, see, like, I, I'm I constantly so trying to get Kevin to do something. I so want him, but I, I, I won't. <laughs> Kevin, I do understand why you don't want to do all this stuff now, because we are in New Hampshire and we have, we have like the only people in the state with the permits, and I understand you got a name. So that's why, but I, I do want to push you to do things that are trending on YouTube, but I know you can't do crazy stuff because you have a reputation. So, you know. Yeah, and it's like <laughs> I know what I can do with the snake. I know I can just sit here and hold it. And then it, it, it's like one of those things. It's just I have to be I have to be responsible. And so I just have to enjoy her and respect her. And you know what? All I do is make her look bad, and I'm literally the moron. It's the person that's going to try to kill the rattlesnake that gets bit. And then suddenly how it's, it's the rattlesnake's fault. The rattlesnake ultimately dies anyways. I want nothing bad for this animal because we've been just raising her as an, a wonderful animal. I did like your comments who uh, about the zoo. Who <laughs> wants to give Kevin a zoo? Kind of, I love that. Oh, yeah. Well, I, I still want a zoo. I want to you know, just be able to display animals. And, look, is she going to do it again? She's still all right. Do it. Do it. She's look at that. Hi, baby. Can you... Just to when you bring them out, people just want to see, honestly, I guarantee if I say it right now, hey, leave a comment if you want to see our King Cobras eat anything. People love that stuff. You know, one thing I do watch when sometimes I watch people free handling animals and they're taking uh, all these liberties with these animals. I see it like some of the overseas stuff, but free handling them. And it hurts me because uh, they don't seem to understand the animal at all. And literally, they're free handling and not getting bit just because the animal is not willing to commit to biting. Snakes don't just freely bite. When a venomous snake bites you, a lot of times it's the last resort. So a lot of snakes don't want to actually bite. Biting is very uh, traumatic for a lot of animals when they actually bite you. So the animal doesn't just like, okay, I'm going to bite you and everything's good again. That puts the animal through a great deal of stress. But I'm watching people handling these animals and doing this stuff, and they're, A, they're incredibly foolish because they're not respecting, if they were to get a venomous bite, what it's capable of doing, but they don't have any magic to them. There's no magic. So we are, a couple videos that you're showing me of some people that are doing the free handling. Um, there is some magic. They have, have magic that allows them to be able to do it. And I could sit here and kind of, you know, look at some of the things like, oh, you know, pick it apart. It's, just don't get bit, guys. We don't, we you don't need any more crap. What? Are you talking about that video of the uh, leucistic uh, king cobra? Is that the one you're making references that, to? That's one of them. There's a whole bunch of those. And I just sit there and I'm watching. I'm like, oh my goodness. Uh, Timmy, my handler, 
Then his handler is like, check out the handling, it's awful. And I'm like, wow. I was like, you guys are just sitting there doing these things. But they're not handling the animals like with like a really great skill set. It's more like disrespect of what the animal's capable of. So they're just doing it and you're perceiving that, especially if you're not a snake person, you're not a venomous handler. They're perceiving that as like, oh wow, they're really good. No, they're not really good. It's the snake that's really good, but they're not giving any credit to the animal and what it's willing to tolerate. I'm more surprised that you actually watched the YouTube video. I did. And I you did found it in your own. I watched some, some stuff. Yeah. And I was just like, man, that's so lovely. 